accessible ramps. Ramps are needed by those using wheelchairs and infants in pushchairs. Also, those using walking assistive devices such as a walking stick, crutch, or walking frame. Also, those with permanent physical conditions which prevent them from using steps such as one side paralysis, leg brace, or artificial limbs, etc. Even some temporary conditions make ramps important. These include pregnancy, an ailment causing temporary weakness such as asthma or dialysis, and those with temporary physical disablement due to leg casts, etc. Signage at the entrance to any building, at the approach there should be the international symbol for accessibility between 1200 and 1600 millimeters from the ground level. Here you can see the signs on the wall showing the accessible ramp. Handrails. All ramps should have handrails on both sides. If it is on the wall side it can be fixed directly to the wall. Ramp landings. At the top and the bottom of any ramp there should be a clear area, a landing where the wheelchair user can maneuver onto the ramp or off the ramp. The minimum dimension is 1,500 by 1,500. Tactile tiles, TGSI. Attention or warning tile, a pattern of 36 raised dots, 5 mm high. These should be placed 300 mm from the beginning and the end of each ramp. Here you can see the guiding tiles or directional tiles. There are four lines on a tile. 300 by 300 tile and again they're raised by five millimeters and this guides people with visual impairment in the direction that they need to go. Ramp width. The width of the ramp varies according to the rise. The minimum width is 1.2 meters but it increases at 750 millimeter rise to a width of 1.5 meters and at 3 meters rise to 1.8 meters. Handrail dimensions. Handrails should be provided at two heights. The upper rail should be at a nominal height of 900 millimeters or between 850 and 950 millimeters. The lower handrail should be at a nominal height of 700 millimeters or between 650 to 750 millimeters. The handrails must extend 300 millimeters beyond either end of the ramp. Ramp gradient or angle. The maximum gradient or angle for any ramp is 1 is to 12 or 4.8 degrees. A ramp with a rise greater than 750 millimeters must have a lower gradient of 1 is to 15, which is 3.8 degrees. Ramp surface. A ramp surface should be non-slip in material with water drainage. Raised traction tiling. The use of raised traction tiling is specifically not allowed. Landings in front of doors. Where a ramp ends at a doorway, extra space needs to be provided, so 1.8 meters by 1.5 is the correct size for this position. Freestanding ramp. Where a ramp is freestanding, it still requires handrails on both sides. Corner landing. Any ramp that has a corner landing will require the landing space to be 1.5 by 1.5 meters as a minimum. Ramp with intermediate landing. The intermediate ramp landing provides a resting place for the wheelchair user and allows other pedestrians to pass easily. Ramp door clearance. Where a ramp ends at a doorway, the clearance of 1.8 meters can be provided by recessing the doorway. Advanced certificate courses are available. Please go to our website and see further details. For further information on accessibility, please go to our website, enablemeaccess.com, E-N-A-B-L-E-M-E-A-C-C-E-S-S -E -E -S -S dot C-O-M.